So there's a new paper out that talks about dinosaurs. And it's interesting not only because it talks about some of the relatively rare fossils that come from Japan, but also because it involves power tools and subatomic particles. This is Fukui Raptor, a Megaraptoran dinosaur coming from Fukui, Japan. And this is the Super Proton Ring 8 GEV, Japan's synchrotron. Synchrotrons work by putting a charged particle, such as a positively charged particle, in between magnets. And if those magnets are positively charged, it'll start to push that particle out of the way. This is especially true if you have negatively charged magnets immediately next to that. And that makes sense, we all know how magnets work, positive to negative. But if you can rapidly change those magnets' polarity, you can then immediately change those negative charges into positive ones, which continues to push the positively charged particle towards the next set, which is now negative. And then you swap it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and it keeps accelerating the particle until it's moving lightning quick, even faster than lightning potentially. And this is great for slamming different elements together and making new ones, or looking at what actually builds a proton, because protons are made up of things. Or in some cases, making teeny, teeny, tiny wavelength x-rays that can see into certain materials super, super well. I hope you see where I'm going with that particular last part because that's where the saws come in in most cases. Histology is the study of tissues, and in paleontology it generally involves taking a saw and cutting open a fossil bone. From that you can actually start to see some of the different features, especially if you cut off a very small piece of it, adhere it to some glass, and then grind it to 0.03 millimeters thick. So you gotta get it super thin, but at that point you can shine polarized light through it. When polarized light actually enters a different kind of medium, it'll change its refraction angle. For example, you can think about when you're looking at water, things that look like they're somewhere when you're above the water aren't necessarily in the same place when you're below water, because the angle of the light actually changes. And then, based on how it changes when it passes through the bone, you can start to tell some of the different features about that bone. For example, you can tell where there's LAGs or lags. These are lines of arrested growth, and they essentially just show where the animal slowed down its growing, which is normally seasonal. For example, they're not going to grow as much in the winter because there's just less food around. The problem with this kind of histology work is it means you have to destroy parts of the bone. I mean, sawing through it means you're taking the entire bone apart, and if you don't have a lot of fossils like Japan doesn't have a lot of, you may be a little adverse to trying to attempt this. And that's why these researchers put two juvenile Fukui raptor legs into the Spring 8 synchrotron and looked to see if it could actually see inside the bone at all. And it turns out this method works really, really well. You can actually see where the sample was put through the synchrotron on one of these images, the black and white one. And then the other image is what it looks like when they sawed through the bone and made a thin section of the exact same part of the limb. And you can see that there's a lot of correlation between what you're seeing. In fact, you can see the lines of arrested growth in the limb from the synchrotron. And this has the potential to be super useful because it's a non-destructive method of actually looking inside the bones of these dinosaurs, something that we normally don't get the chance to do. It's also a little unfortunate that it comes from a synchrotron just because paleontology is often underfunded and synchrotrons are expensive and table saws are much less expensive. There's been a lot of work though recently done on many of the different animals that have been found in the beds near Fukui though. And so hopefully we'll start to get more of this kind of research done, which will hopefully enlighten us a little bit more on what some of these different animals might have been, because they're often partial and because of the time period during the early Cretaceous, it's a little hard to tell what some of these animals were. They might belong to one group or another. For example, with Fukui Raptor, the Megaraptorans are often debated as to whether they're Allosauroids or Tyrannosauroids. They're somewhere in there and not directly related to either of those main groups, but again, related to those groups, they fall in there somewhere. But those two groups are separated by millions of years of evolution. So depending on which one it's on, it's changing our understanding of the evolution of these dinosaurs a lot. But these groups also had very different growth rates. So hopefully we'll get a chance to actually quantify the kind of growth rings we do see by running something like the holotype of a Kui Raptor, which is much larger and much more complete. And if we run it through there and are able to see the different kind of growth rates, either a slower, longer growth rate in the case of the Allosauroids, or a very sudden spike in growth rate like in the Tyrannosauroids, we'll get a better understanding of which of these groups it belongs to.